Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. We're going to be discussing both RDNA 3 as well as RDNA 4 in this video, as both of AMD's future GPU architectures are shaping up to be very exciting. But first, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace has everything you need to get your website off the ground, from design tools, marketing, as well as analytics. Squarespace has all you need to make your dream a reality. From what I understand, the RX 6000 series has largely been deemed as very successful internally at AMD, despite the issues, of course, of shortages. The RDNA 2 architecture is competing very favorably with NVIDIA's Ampere series of GPUs, despite the lack of ray tracing performance compared to NVIDIA, but traditional rasterization is definitely there, and ray tracing is still going to be maybe a year or two before it's a must-have for AAA titles. And, of course, AMD are still... a well, basically in the process of releasing their DLSS competitor, FSR. However, I am told it is going to be this year. RDNA 1 launched with fairly favorable reviews, but of course there was the driver instability, which we all know about with users experiencing blank screens. I tried personally to replicate these issues with multi-monitor configurations, uh, trying with low-end power supplies, Intel, as well as AMD chipsets, and I personally couldn't get them to occur, but well, yeah, a lot of my friends did have those experiences and many viewers did as well. So to that end, AMD currently are focusing more on stability of their drivers and feature parity, rather than trying to rush out a whole new bunch of features to my understanding. And yeah, they seem to be succeeding with that rather successfully for RDNA 2, but this brings us of course to RDNA 3, because to my understanding, RDNA 3 is going to continue this legacy. RDNA 3, very much in software, as well as features, we'll get into them specifically in a moment, is going to basically be more of a feature creep compared to RDNA 2. RDNA 4, however, radically changes this along with the basic design of the architecture. But yeah, let's focus for a moment longer on RDNA 3 because there's a lot to go through here. So Narvo 31 and 32 are chiplet-based, as we've discussed a million times at this point. To my understanding, Narvo 33, however, is still a monolithic design, which I find rather interesting. Obviously, this does give AMD a ton of flexibility when it comes to, you know, creating different SKUs based upon yields. Focusing just for a second on Narve 31, there is also going to be an IO die as well. So it's going to be two compute-based chiplets and then a third die, which is IO. And obviously this is going to handle things such as, for example, communicating for uh, to the CPU over the PCIe bus and so on and so on. However, what is a little bit of a mystery at the moment, exactly how we will see the different configurations of the GPU. Let's take a theoretical 7950 XT. I want to stress that I'm making this name up purely as an example. So with this, of course, there are going to be two chiplets, each with 80 CU enabled. So this, naturally, 80 plus 80. If we do complicated maths, we can reach the grand total of 160. But let's assume that there's another GPU. Let's call it the 7900 and say that the target number of compute units is 144. So how will this work? Well, I think example uh, two is probably going to be right, but example one would be chiplet A with 80 compute units and chiplet B with 64. So of course, if you add those two up together, that's 144. However, I think more likely is example the second, where each chiplet has 72 compute units, so again, 72 times 72 is 144. I've already discussed in a previous video how RDNA 3 is going to offer two and a half times the performance, at least in traditional rasterization, to what RDNA 2 offers, thanks to, of course, double the number of compute units, as well as other things, which we'll get into in just a moment. But hardware-based ray tracing performance is probably going to be much more NVIDIA-like. I'm hearing that it's probably going to be very much, you know, depending on the title. And one benefit that AMD does have is that well, RDNA essentially is everywhere at this point. So with every Xbox or PlayStation sold, developers become even more familiar with the RDNA architecture, which is going to, of course, naturally help uh, optimize around uh, the AMD ecosystem. But what about the actual changes to RDNA 3? Well, they are numerous to my understanding. The first is, well, pretty obvious. It is a chiplet design, at least for RDNA 
uh, sorry, at least with Nave 31 and 32. We also see larger amounts of Infinity Cash, but what I don't know quite yet is whether this means that per chiplet the 128 megabyte limit is higher, or whether you're just talking about because it's two chiplets and just, you know, with the patent that we've already discussed with the active bridges, so whether they're kind of taking that into consideration. So if we look at Nave 33, for example, would it be more uh, cash than what we have with, let's say, Nave 21. At the moment, I'm not 100%. There is also changes, apparently, to the geometry performance of the GPU. It is actually improved. I'm hearing it's going to be a decent improvement, but I don't have any details as to exactly how it's improved. We also have, of course, uh, other tweaks, such as improvements in ray tracing performance, which I just mentioned, uh, clock frequency increases, as well as IPC gains. So this is, of course, how AMD are coming to those two and a half times performance targets that I mentioned earlier. The real win here, though, for AMD is the fact that RDNA 3 is going to be more power efficient as well. So not only will its rasterization performance beat that of Lovelace, but it does so at lower power consumption, which is, of course, a double win. But now let's switch to RDNA 4, as RDNA 4 necessitates rather large changes in the architecture to keep up with NVIDIA's Hopper architecture. We'll get into RDNA 4 in just a moment, but first, let's talk about the video sponsor, Squarespace. Making your mark on the web doesn't have to be complicated. With a ton of fully customizable templates and themes, Squarespace's versatile tools make it easier than ever to create your dream website. Simply select your starting template theme from a huge library of themes, all designed around different categories of website. From there, you can make your website truly your own and customize it as much or as little as you like. The platform goes much beyond simple design of a website though with expert advice on hand should you need it. There are also tools for SEO, social media integration and email campaigns. So whether you're selling an art design or simply building a portfolio, Squarespace is everything on hand to get your name out there. And to top it off, you can save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain with the code REDGAMINGTECH. So just use the link in the description. From everything I understand thus far, RDNA 3 is coming up to be a very good architecture, but RDNA 4 is basically AMD going balls to the wall. Everything must be absolutely perfect because of what they're going to be facing from the onslaught of NVIDIA's Hopper architecture. Hopper, and I want to get this abundantly clear right now, a Hopper is going to be amazing. It's possibly going to be one of the biggest leaps we've seen in performance for any NVIDIA architecture or indeed any GPU architecture we've seen to date. It is going to be pretty damn revolutionary. And one of the reasons, of course, is that Hopper is no longer going to be a monolithic design. It's going to be NVIDIA's first foray into chiplets. So this means that AMD naturally need to bring all of the, you know, all of their uh, uh, R&D to bear to really be able to fend off NVIDIA or there's going to be this switch again where NVIDIA does claw its way back on top. Whereas with Lovelace, NVIDIA are going to rely on features such as DLSS and possibly slightly edging out uh, AMD in ray tracing performance, although it's not going to be by much, as I just mentioned, there is going to be a substantial redesign of both architectures for both Hopper as well as RDNA 4. In a previous video, I said that I believe it's very likely that the MLA chiplet patent machine learning accelerator, which is basically, you know, the AMD equivalent of a tensor core uh, solution, albeit in a chiplet form, that is going to be uh, probably for RDNA 4 and not RDNA 3. And now a couple of sources have come forward and told me that they are almost certain that this is the case. And again, this is going to be very important against what AMD will be facing with Hopper, as it is very much a from the ground up design. One thing that is working very well for AMD at the moment is its separation of both compute-based architectures for servers, so that is, of course, cDNA, and graphics-focused architectures, which, of course, is RDNA. Now, when I first leaked about this strategy in March of 2019, we didn't know the official names, but I was told that this is a strategy that AMD would continue to employ and push for quite a long time because they believe that designing around an architecture which is basically kind of the jack of all trades didn't really work so well for them with GCN. And, you know, 
Yeah, GCN was fairly decent, particularly with things like asynchronous compute, but in raw gaming performance, it just wasn't super duper efficient. I find it particularly interesting because CDNA2 and CDNA3 seem to be following the same path as both RDNA3 as well as RDNA4. So RDNA3 feels like an evolution of RDNA2, and this does seem to be the case for CDNA2. We've discussed CDNA2 a couple of times at this point. It's got additional instructions and some other tweaks, but I cannot even get confirmation that it is actually a chiplet design. In fact, I'm leaning on it being a monolithic design. In fact, I'm pretty darn certain of it. But CDNA3 is not a monolithic design. It is a chiplet design. And to my, again, understanding, I could be wrong on this, but I am pretty confident I think that CDNA3 is going to be a massive increase in performance. And why is this? Why are we seeing these major architectural shifts from both AMD and NVIDIA? Well, for one, obviously, competition between the two is heating up, but there are other factors as well. Basically, both of them are feeling the pressure from Intel. And while I don't think DG2, which, you know, I've discussed at detail at this point on the channel many times, while I don't think DG2 is going to be enough to claw back the, or claw any gaming market necessarily from uh, AMD or NVIDIA, at least to the point of where they need to be concerned initially, future gaming architectures definitely will put pressure on AMD and NVIDIA, assuming that is that Raja Kodori and his team can internally prove that they have, you know, a decent shot at competing in the gaming arena. And that's really what it is at the moment. Intel want to see how people receive their graphics solutions and whether they can get all of their ducks in the row. But for the actual uh, server market, they definitely have things a lot more, you know, kind of worked out. And I am hearing that the architecture is really, really good. For Intel's first foray into the server market, I am hearing that the GPU is quite hot and power hungry, but future architectures do seem to improve that uh, issue quite considerably. So again, AMD and NVIDIA both understand that there is a lot of pressure and also what we're seeing as well from Chinese manufacturers. So what I want you to take away from this is RDNA 3 as well as Lovelace are going to be significantly better architectures than what we have now. Major increases in performance, of course, and ultimately they're going to be definitely major upgrades compared to, let's say, an RTX 3080 or whatever. But from a geek perspective, I feel that RDNA 4 as well as the Hopper architecture are going to be extremely exciting. And I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing where the industry goes after this, because quite honestly, it's gonna to start to get very interesting as we get smaller and smaller in terms of manufacturing processes as well. Obviously, chiplets are the future, but yeah, I, um, I'll be interested to see what games look like in four or five years when we have this level of performance. And given that the ray tracing performance alone on these architectures will be so vastly better than what we are now, we're kind of in the dawn of this era, to be honest with you. I think that we're seeing like a fundamental shift. It's gonna be extremely interesting to see what games, at least in my opinion, look like in a few years time. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Click the likey and the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.